So I'm going to do a little sound test with a bunch of my vintage keyboards as well as some switch testers. So I guess I'll start off with the highest frequency or highest pitched switches, which is of course MX Blues. Um, here I just took a bunch of, so I had a few, quite a few of these bulk switch testers and gathered a bunch of them to make something like a keyboard, but I'm missing a cone. So I don't get a full uh, ortholinear, but probably know what these sound like. Just trying to type now is a good time. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of the party. <laughs> That's something you normally type on a typewriter. <laughs> then we have some KBD fans, his yo yo tester. These are some Bobas that I got from a group buy. Model F, Model M, Buckle Sling Spring, Beam Spring. I have yet to get a full board of Model M Buckling Springs, and of course, these guys. ITW Magnetic Separation, I think. Damped, Undamped. Razor, purple optical. Bunch of Alp switches and this cute thing. Mm, cherry mouse trap. Barely tactile, if at all. Amber Alps. Blue Alps. Matthias White. Gray Alps. Simplified White Alps. Salmon Alps. Orange Alps. Of course, this isn't really comparable outside of a board. Matthias Gray, or I guess Tactile, I forgot the exact name. Matthias White again. I think this is white dampened or something. Cream dampened. Black Alps. Let's just move those to the back as we transition to the full keyboards. So, let's see what I consider to be the highest pitched among these. Guess which ones I'm pressing. Sounded deep, didn't it? I guess probably the highest pitched of these clicky vintage boards is my Zeos NMB with clicky black space invaders.
nice and gentle tactility. Not much, very much wobble at all. Um, other than the fundamental frequency of this board, I find it to sound rather higher pitched. This is a leading edge DC 2214 with Alps SKCM Blue. Let's say that, yes, it sounds like Blue Alps, but I'm not really in for the hype of the feel. <laughs> I very much prefer a different board that I'll show you later in terms of feel and as a daily driver. Though I do have still have to get a converter for this. I mean it's a nice collectible, but I find that the feel is a bit actually too light. I might prefer the tactility of Amber Alps. I guess model F18 is technically a bit higher pitched in overall harmonic content. Deeper there. Model F with buckling springs. The deeper is a uh, Magnavox video writer with Alps SKCM Brown. And Alps SK CM Green of the, I forget the exact term, but it's like the halved version. Nice and pingy. Well, not nice, but pingy. Then we will transition to my very first mechanical keyboard. Probably still my favorite as a user, both in sound and feel. The ASIO Retro Classic Artisan has a different feel now. This is basically a click collar switch, but with a custom. So these switches are called KL, KL Typelets, specifically made for ASIO. Um, technically based off of Omron um, optical switches or something. I forget or the switches that were designed to allow you to have the backlight right at the center of the switch. Spacebar sounds horrible. These stabilizers sound nicer to me. Of course, it sounds a bit different on my actual computer desk. Compared to this 
say Blue Alps here in this chassis. Hmm, I don't know. It depends on where you are. This is a denser table than my keyboard tray. And lastly, my latest acquisition, HP 46020A with third generation Fujitsu leaf springs of the clicky variety. That's deep. Though I must say, basically feels linear. Definitely makes a little gentle click, a deep one. Has like the tiniest uh, tactility comparable to this guy. Key, the keycaps do feel interesting. These keycaps could probably look cursed, but I'd say they're not that bad. Yeah, this is a deep keyboard. This depends on the surface. Like, I find that the base component of this keyboard is accentuated on my computer's keyboard tray. 